Hey guys, for all the white wine lovers, I have something for you. When people ask me about my home country of Luxembourg, I mostly refer to our beer and wines in the first place. The region of the Mosel River is famous for their excellent white wines and attract thousands of wine tourists every year. Luxembourg is a tiny, tiny country the size of Rhode Island situated in between Germany, France and Belgium. And uh, yes, it's an own country. Or to be more precise, it's a Grand Duchy, Grand Duchy, Duchy, Duchy. Nowadays, winemakers in the Mosel region offer a wide variety of wines such as Riesling, Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Oxera, Rivana, Alpling, Gewürztraminer, and Chardonnay. No wonder that wine is uh, tightly related with food, yet there are dishes even based on Luxembourgish wines such as Wein Sauces, a wine flavored sausage that mostly comes with a sauce made out of Luxembourgish mustard, or like in this video, the Rieslings Pastet, a pastry filled with meat surrounded by a jelly made out of Riesling. If you now ask if we have palm trees in Luxembourg, no we don't, this is Florida. For making a Riesling's Pasch date, you will need some time, two days to be precise. There will be three main steps, brining the meat, making the dough and cooking the jelly. So for the meat we will need the following. 7 ounces of uh, pork meat, 7 ounces of veal, salt and pepper, 1 onion, 1 and a half tablespoon of water, 1 and a half tablespoon of white wine vinegar, 1 and a quarter cup of Riesling, 2 to 3 bay leaves and 5 cloves. For the pastry dough we need 2 and a half cups of flour, a half cup or one stick of butter, salt and pepper, 3 quarter cups of water and 1 egg for the brushing. For our jelly we would need one and a half envelopes of gelatin, like six sheets, so one and a quarter cup of Riesling wine, two thirds of a cup of water and one cube of vegetable bouillon. Starting with brining the meat. Get your bottle of Riesling, your white wine vinegar, the onion, the spices and the meat. In my case I used some boneless pork ribs and some pre-cut veal cutlets. You will need the three bay leaves, the five cloves and some peppercorn. I prefer freshly ground pepper, but that's up to you. Start cutting the pork into cubes. This does not have to be accurate as we will grind up the meat later on anyways. For the veal save up one half, we will need the other half tomorrow to add a nice chunky texture to our filling. Cut up the onion, in my case I only used half of this giant yellow monstrosity. Add them to your meat. Now add the bay leaves and cloves, pepper it up and neatly add some salt. For the brine add one and a quarter cup of Riesling to a measuring cup, then add one and a half tablespoon of vinegar and the same amount of water. Pour the brine over the meat, give it a nice stir and put it into your fridge overnight. The next day our meat is brined and ready for the next steps. It should have changed color due to the acidity of the vine and vinegar and now looks almost cooked. Drain the liquids and get rid of the bay leaves and cloves, in case you used whole peppercorns, fumble them out as well. For my taste there were too much onions in my final mixture, so I took some out. Now put the drained mixture into a food processor and uh, puree it down to a creamy texture, like a pâté. The 
this step is not mandatory, but recommended when you spend hours and hours in the kitchen. Cut the veal we saved from yesterday in fine cubes. Mix them into your sausage meat. Um, the best way of doing this is to use your hands because you can feel when the mixture is ready. Oh, and sure you can use latex gloves for that. For the dough, though, though <laughs> sift the flour to get rid of any clumps and make it fluffy. Cut your stick of butter into pieces and start adding them while kneading it down to dough. Add a spritz of water to make it bind better. The dough should first have a consistency of sand. Then after kneading it further it will bind and you will get this ball of pâte brisée. After 15 minutes in the freezer our pastry is ready. As I purposely forgot where I put my rolling pin, I emptied this bottle of Chardonnay instead. As the dough is pretty brittle, um, use some parchment paper as an underlay and roll out the dough. We need four, five to six inch squares to be cut out. Carefully separate them, then take some of our filling and form four sausages that matches the size of the dough squares. Crack open an egg and scramble it up. Brush the edges of the pastries and then carefully fold it over the sausage. Fold over the other side, squeeze together the open ends and fold them over. Watch out to not rip apart the brittle pastry blanket. Avoid any holes because they will lead our jelly to run out later on. For making the recognizable pattern of a Riesling's pastete, we need to cut out some circles. If you don't have a cookie cutter, you can simply use a soda can, but traditionally they would have a rippled pattern on the outside. So here I am using the leftover dough from before, rolling it out to about the same thickness, big enough to cut out four cookies. Brush down some egg on the midsection of your pastries, then glue them down, then gently press around the edges. Now we need some aluminum foil and something we can use to poke a hole into our pastries. I used a peeler with a sharp edged handle, but a pointed knife also works fine. Fold over the aluminum foil to make it solid, then roll it around a handle to form four little chimneys. 
use your tool of choice to match the right diameter. Time to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now carefully punch a hole in the middle of your pastries. Then we insert the chimneys we just made. Nonetheless, give the pastries a nice egg wash to seal them off. Then it's time to put them in the oven for around 50 minutes to an hour. While waiting, bring the 2 and 3rd cup uh, of water to a boil. Throw in the bouillon cube and let it dissolve. Then take it off the stove. In a small bowl, stir in the envelope of gelatin into another half cup of cold water until mostly dissolved. Let it sit for around 10 minutes. When the 10 minutes have passed, bring the stock back up to a boil. Add the one and a quarter cup of Riesling and gently add the gelatin. Stir, 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 boil, boil, boil until dissolved. I formed two patties out of the leftover meat and put them into a cake pan. That's for another specialty. Our Riesling's Pastaten are done. Let them cool off a bit before removing the chimneys. Then start filling the wine jelly mixture into the manholes. Make sure the pastries are completely cooled off before filling. Fill the pastries one scoop at a time, then put them in the fridge. Uh, repeat this every 10 minutes, 4 to 6 times until the pastries are filled completely. And believe me, this is the hardest part as the whole house smells of freshly baked goodness. Now for our patties. Uh, as I didn't have a meatloaf pan, I decided to use a whiskey glass. I stack the two patties on top of each other, then fill it up with the wine jelly. And there you go, this is simply called jelly in Luxembourg. And you can eat this on a slice of freshly baked sourdough or whole grain bread. Now this is the last filling procedure until finally my Riesling's Pastaten are finished. Let them sit another hour in the fridge until the jelly has completely hardened. And there you go, one of the most luxurious snack foods ever, the Rieslings Posh Date. Please let me a comment below and uh, consider to subscribe. I hope you will try it out and let me know how they were. That's it for my part, see you soon.